Hey guys, welcome back to the video. If you haven't seen part one where I talk about my daily life as a university teacher, please go and check that out. Here I will talk about all the different kinds of schools in China. Moving on. Now we have training centers. I do have a lot of friends who work at training centers or have worked at training center. There's a training center nearby that I know a lot of people who work at. And I'm not going to give you my opinion, <laughs> but I don't work at a training center for a reason. All right, training center pros. Number one, pretty decent salary, usually, as long as you can negotiate, okay? They might try to rip you off, but just try to negotiate, get a decent salary. Number two is they should have smaller class sizes. A lot of training centers usually have a cap of 10 to 12 students per classroom. And again, you could have small classes, about four kids. So if you think a large classroom is not for you, maybe you wanna look more at a training center job. Next pro is they'll hire anyone. Is that a pro? Maybe it is for you. If you think, oh, I'm new out of college, I have no experience, I don't wanna teach at a university, oh, maybe a training center is right for you. They typically have lower requirements in my experience okay um we're gonna stick to legally hiring because i've seen training centers who will hire anyone no matter who they are just because of how they look that's a common thing anyway next they should have a curriculum usually it's a set of books that they want their kids to move up in so you have a curriculum there should be a teacher's book there should be some kind of program maybe even videos interactive stuff like that again if you think you need more structure in what to teach even how to teach training centers can give you more of that structure also in the classroom should be a chinese ta so if you think especially you young kids who know no English, they have no idea what you're saying, they can help you translate, they can help you with behavior management, classroom management, um, and just preparing things as well. So if you want that kind of assistance, training centers can provide that. Let's talk about the cons for a training center. Kind of long. Number one, <laughs> you could work five or six days a week not necessarily having weekends off. In fact, probably not having weekends off. If you work at a training center and don't work on the weekends full time, that's impossible. Usually the two days off are gonna be Monday and Tuesday or Tuesday, Wednesday I've seen. Um, you're not gonna have Saturday and Sunday off. In fact, Saturday and Sunday are going to be full long days of work because obviously you need to work when kids are not at their public schools, right? So evenings and weekends are when the training centers are open. Saturdays and Sundays, usually maybe nine to nine. I've heard that a lot. So 12 hours, obviously you get a lunch break, you get a dinner break, but it's gonna be long days. And if you think you have a lot of friends working at public schools or universities or kindergartens where they celebrate things on the weekends, they go out for dinner or drinks or brunch on the weekends, you can no longer take part in that because your days off are Mondays and Tuesdays and they maybe work those days. So something to think about, I feel like the training center employees have their own schedule and us who work at public places have our own schedule. So that can be conflicting, especially if you think about friends. With your students, training centers are going to be typically younger especially kindergarten, preschool age. Um, that's when parents are really trying to get their kids started in English. There are going to be older kids, maybe to middle school, even high school maybe. Um, but adult classes are a little rarer to find. Some training centers do have adult classes, but Again, it's gonna be typically younger students, so just keep that in mind. Now, if we talk about office hours, training centers require office hours, which I don't fully understand. I have friends who work there, and I don't understand why do they need to be there at like three when classes don't start until six, and they're not doing anything. And honestly, half the time their boss isn't even there. So I find that to be a little strange for training centers. They have a lot of required office hours, again, on the evening, the weekdays, maybe your classes are from six to nine. 
um, but you need to be there at three or four so that could be a little bit draining you think oh I have all day until the evening but actually maybe you only have the morning and early afternoon to do what you want let's talk about holiday training centers run on their own time now keep in mind that training centers are for profit right schools typically are there to educate training centers sure they want to educate but their main goal is to make more money and earn more money so why would they close for holidays they don't want to take a month-long winter or summer break when they could be making money during that time therefore a lot of training centers they will not give you long winter breaks long summer breaks they'll give you maybe i think the typical amount should be 10 or 14 days about two weeks on average maybe you can get away with more your training center again this is just what i've heard my friends have experienced you're not going to get a full holiday and even if it's a short holiday so for example last friday was dragon ball festival Friday was time off, free day, right? Most people who worked kindergarten, public school, university, we're like, oh, we have Friday off. Guess what? We also have Saturday and Sunday. Automatic three-day weekend. You can do whatever you want. But if you work at a training center, sure, you have Friday off, but you still have your full Saturday. You still have your full Sunday. So it's not the same. Same with a lot of the short holidays like May Day. We had five days off for May Day. However, my training center friends, they didn't have five days off. I think they only had like two days off. And I was like, that's really ridiculous. And especially summer and winter, when you want to visit your friends, maybe you want to do long-term travel, it's hard to do on 10 days. Are you really going to go back to the States or Canada or Australia just for 10 days? It gets to be expensive for such a short time. That's my opinion also something that i've heard with some training centers now again it depends if you're looking at the big name training centers or just like random training centers local um some of them give you a probation month so the first month maybe they promise you this salary they're not going to give you 100 percent they're going to give you i think typically 80 percent of your salary the first month um as a probation which i think is so stupid i think it's so stupid probation month whatever um but just be aware that some places do that typical training center salary is going to range from about twelve thousand to twenty thousand and you might think wow that's a good amount of money just think of what you're doing for that money that's all again less freedom more money it's up to you do you think it's worth it okay and again try to negotiate the best you can i've had friends who have worked at training centers for twelve thousand when they could have definitely negotiated to at least 15. so it breaks my heart to see people not negotiate or use a recruiter if you use a recruiter they might not be looking out for your best interest keep that in mind next is going to be kindergartens if you remember your time in kindergarten, you probably think, oh, I had a blast, I did art projects, I had fun, recess, yeah. So working at a kindergarten in China typically is going to be your Monday through Friday job, obviously not on the weekends. Some jobs you can find that are going to be only mornings from 9 to noon. Some are going to be maybe 9 to 3, 4, they might not be a full day, but depends on where what kind of kindergarten some really want to lock their teachers down obviously kindergartens come with a high salary why might this be in my opinion kindergartens can be very taxing there is a lot of stuff to do you might have to do a lot of singing a lot of dancing again these kids are gonna be four five they don't know how to make a sentence. They might not even know what is Apple. So you're teaching the basics, okay? If you want to teach the basics, okay. Some people, myself included, I get bored teaching basics. Apple, 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 Apple. I'm sick of it. I like to teach complicated things, have conversations, have open discussions, debate. Obviously at a kindergarten you can't do that. More basic learning, a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, a lot of game time. Similar to a training center as well. But again, you have the weekends off. Maybe your schedule is a little lighter. Um, obviously, you will not be living on campus because kindergartens don't have um, apartments on them. 
maybe you can find an apartment nearby hopefully they will help you find an apartment your job should help you find an apartment if they don't just make them just make them do it that's all another thing with kindergartens is the class sizes can be larger not as big as a university but it could be like 30 maybe even 40. They might even combine classes together to have an English class with you. So just be careful of that or just be aware of that. It's not gonna be, oh, kindergarten with 10 kids. Mm, probably not. And obviously with kindergartens, you are still going to have that longer holiday, public holidays off. You're not gonna have to worry about that. So that is another benefit working at kindergarten. Again, I think it's very tiring. If you are a very energetic person, you really like singing, you really like dancing and playing around, that's your personality, then maybe working in a kindergarten is for you. I know it doesn't fit my, my personality, and that's why I don't try to work at a kindergarten, even though I know the salary can be much higher. That's another thing I want to say, and hopefully maybe you can understand, is don't get a job based on the money if it's not you. I've tried that. It's tiring. If I'm not energetic and I have to go to work every day and dance and sing and talk in a baby voice and play games with small children, I know that doesn't fit me. I know I'm not gonna be happy. I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna be mentally exhausted and maybe physically exhausted too. But I can work at a university, I can have these nice long discussions, talk about high level things, talk maybe more in depth and then I don't feel as bad coming home. Sure my salary is lower but I think happiness is more important and your mental stability as well. I think working at some of these places can mentally weigh on you. For kindergartens the expected salary can range from about 15000 to 22000 Again this depends on your city, where you are in the city as well. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna work somewhere in the city center, probably a higher salary than working somewhere further away from the city center, cost of living, people in the neighborhood, stuff like that. All right, next we're gonna talk about public schools. Now this can be primary school, middle schools, or high schools, but just public schools, not private. Pros, again, you have a Monday through Friday schedule. You have weekends off. You have the major holidays off so you should have again more free time well not more free time but you have free time the salary is usually decent not too high not too low typically again depending on your school but it's not bad your teaching hours are going to be maybe 20 about 20 weekly hours which <laughs> is not that bad you might have office hours, so you might have to stay on campus even when you're not teaching or come in early, but depending on you, I think office hours can be relaxing. I might want to prepare my stuff anyway, so why not just do it on school? Some public schools will even provide you lunch or dinner if you are there late, but they'll give you free lunch. Is it gonna be the best thing you've ate? Probably not, but if you just wanna save money in that way, it's probably an option at your public school. Now with public schools, classes can be larger from 30 to 40. Again, depending on your age group, can be larger, can be more difficult. They can be down to 20 something as well. It all depends on your city, let's be real. Also, living on campus can be a nightmare. They might have teacher housing on campus at public schools. However, I've had friends who they worked at a middle school and they lived on campus and what they had a problem with is there was nothing nearby. To get to a market or a grocery store, they had to go a long ways. All their, they were living in the middle of nowhere, it seemed. So definitely research your school before going there, especially if it's like a primary school, middle school, high school. Because another thing, I should have said this with the benefits of working at a university, is with high school, middle school, that's who you're going to be around. You are the adult, right? But at a university, there are people around your age who are also students. Not only are there going to be international students who are your age or older, there are gonna be Chinese students who are your age or older. Now again, I'm assuming you're under 30, but if you're over 30, that's okay too. You can still make friends. But I feel like 
all of my friends who have worked in middle schools or primary schools or even high schools and they're kind of closed off they don't have that opportunity of making friends as much even I'm walking around my campus I see the foreign students I'm gonna say hi I can be friends with them because they're foreigners we just want to be friends maybe we're similar in age you're not gonna have those kind of opportunities working at a public school so it might be harder to make friends you might feel like you have to be friends with your colleagues even if you don't get along with them and some people have had problems with that I had one girl who came here and she left after a month because she couldn't make friends as quickly as she has hoped again you have to keep that in mind making friends is a whole nother thing the salary for a public school can range from 8,000 to 16,000 depending on your city. Do I have to say that every time? I'm going to say it just to be safe. It depends on your city. Okay. The last one we have is international schools. Obviously these are not going to be available in every city in China. Major cities are going to have a lot of international schools. You can maybe find some international schools in smaller cities but might be harder to find. Obviously a pro is if you have a teaching license from your home country you can get a job here. You can get a good salary with that. The teaching hours are usually going to be about 20 to 25. Again not too terrible. Um, you might have office hours. You might have to stay on campus. Again the class sizes will be smaller than public schools because obviously international schools you have to pay tuition that not everyone can afford. So the classes will be smaller. You can even find some American, Canadian, British, Australian. So if you're from that specific country, it might help you as well. And it's a different kind of teaching style and learning style, which you might like. You have to think a lot of these public schools, kindergartens, they're not gonna necessarily allow you to teach American style, British style. They want you to teach Chinese style learning. So some people have a problem with that, just another thing to think about. Obviously with international schools, they will provide you with materials and they are probably gonna be really good materials. You're probably gonna agree with them or think, yeah, these are really useful. I want to teach this or I enjoy teaching this or oh, we can do experiments or we can learn in a different style. Like I said, you might have to stay on campus. The schedule is going to be usually nine to five, Monday through Friday. So a typical job back in the States. You're not gonna be teaching nine to five, five days a week, but you will probably just have to be at school and just around. Anyway, so <laughs> one of the cons, well, I think it's a con, you might not think it's a con, of working at an international school is a lot of the contracts I've seen are two-year contracts. Why I have a problem with this is because I don't know if I start working somewhere, am I going to work th want to work there for two years? What if I have problems within the first semester? If I have a problem at a new job in the first semester, I think, okay, maybe I only have six more months. I don't have to think, oh, I have a year and a half left. Are you kidding me? So that's why I've kind of been afraid to work at an international school is because of the commitment of two years. Now, I know some people can find one-year contracts at international schools, but a lot of the ones I've seen are two years and obviously I want to say this because international schools are going to have a really high salary. However, you might not be qualified. Again, a lot of them you need a teaching certificate from your home country or you need to have majored in a specific subject. If they want a math teacher, you need to be a math major or a science teacher, physics teacher, something like that. You can't come and say, oh, I have a degree in film studies. Can I be the physics teacher? They're not gonna hire you, sorry. Maybe they will <laughs> if they're desperate, but probably not. That salary, like I said, is going to be really high. It is gonna be typically from 20,000 to 30,000 nice salary again this is going to be for qualified people hey guys surprise surprise another long video i will be having a part three where i answer frequently asked questions about all of the schools and in general teaching english in china see you next time